What were the worst photography tips and advices I received in the past 13 years of my photography career? I thought about that question. I want to share three of them with you in this video. Number one, you need expensive gear or equipment. And this is by far the most common bad advice. It's like telling a chef in a restaurant you need expensive knives and pans to make delicious food. Or a painter you need an expensive canvas or brush to paint great pictures. Art is about imagination and creativity. You can take really awesome pictures with your smartphone only if the concept, subject or scene is good. Expensive equipment or newest gadgets can help you. They can make your work easier, but they can't replace your creativity and your skills. You have to learn your craft, just like anyone else. You can't build a house of wood just because you have a saw and a tree. You can't take amazing pictures just because you have an expensive new camera and or lens. Learn to master the equipment you have and don't fall for advertisements that want to tell you something else. Photographers 20 years ago took great pictures without modern technology. And you can too. Number two, criticism is useful for your photography. Criticism is useful for your photography is a statement I've been disagreeing with for years, especially in art. And photography for me is an art just as it is a craft. Criticism is counterproductive and damages creativity. Why? Criticism is, according to definition, the evaluation of a thing or action with the help of objective or subjective standards. Sounds difficult? I explain. Photography and art are primarily about taste. And since tastes are different, there is no right and no wrong. So every criticism is wrong and right at the same time. But how is it possible? Because everyone expresses his own opinion based on his own standards, experiences and knowledge or not knowledge. A Van Gogh painting, for example, compared to a Rembrandt seems like child's drawing if you don't know about art and do not appreciate the different styles. You cannot compare one with the other. And even if you can, there is always the subjective taste of a person. One likes it more colorful, the other rather plain. One likes yellow, another person more blue. One likes pizza, the other pasta. It doesn't help a Van Gogh to say him that his pictures looks like a child's painting. Please paint it like Rembrandt Van Gogh if you want to be a great painter. Even if it seems subjectively right for the critic, the criticism is not useful for anyone. A Van Gogh is a Van Gogh and a Rembrandt is a Rembrandt. Paintings by both are worth millions. So what's the point? Criticism only makes sense to the artist when it comes from someone the artist wants to learn from whose opinion is qualified and by whose standards the artist wants to be measured. The critic often sees himself as a benefactor who only wants to help the artist or others. In essence, however, the critic is usually only about his own ego. He wants to distinguish himself and show how important he or she and his or her opinion is and how much he or she supposedly knows. My tip, especially for young or beginning photographers, find one or two mentors, digital or real life, doesn't matter, who are better than you and from whom you want to learn and openly seek dialogue. Ask what can I do better and fade out everything else. And if you don't know anyone personally, look for books for interviews, opinions of the people or videos of people if there are YouTube videos out whose work you like. And then, important, take criticism always only as an opinion and not as right or wrong because it is always right and wrong at the same time. Your mentors will also change over the years as you develop yourself. 
Art is always an expression of yourself, what you feel and what you think. The hobby, photography, is about having fun. It's a hobby. And most people do photography as a hobby only. And you'll always develop. Even if you think you don't develop, you develop. With a mentor who accomplished what you want to accomplish, you'll develop much faster. Criticism from the wrong people, however, will lead you down the wrong path and will slow you down. It will nurture self-doubt and, in the worst case, even cause you to stop doing what you once enjoyed. Because you're afraid of what the critics will say about it, about your work, about what you like. An extra tip, focus on the people who like your art already and don't try to convince the people who don't like your art. How do you feel about criticism, especially in social media? Write it in the comments below. Before we head on to number three, I want to thank you for watching the video and introduce today's sponsor of the video. Even though gear doesn't make you a better photographer, it can help you get the photos you seek for or to stay comfortable even if conditions are not. Haukland, photographer's clothing, developed and published the first 501 jacket for photographers three years ago in Europe and is offering US shipping soon this year. If you want to learn more about their mission, of creating the best jacket for photographers and to profit from their limited early bird offers, go to www.haukland.us. Link is also in the description box below. Number three, you don't need to edit your images. For snapshots, that's fine. But if you're serious about taking pictures with a real camera, then you need to edit your images. Even if it's just cropping, or brightening maybe, or darkening, or removing dust spots and so on. Most serious photographers shoot in RAW and your images will always look flatter and less contrasty than a JPEG image if you shoot RAW because your camera is processing the JPEG without you knowing. The camera will process the shadows a bit brighter to give you more dynamic range, enhance colors, contrast, sharpness, and I will upload a whole video about RAW and JPEG soon here. Um, and if the link is available, I will put it here if you watch the video on a later moment. Your RAW image, as the name says, is RAW, like a RAW piece of meat. Your JPEG already has been grilled by the camera, but not as you might imagine. Medium rare, with a bit of Himalaya smoked salt, but rather in the microwave seasoned with ketchup. You can eat both, but there's a difference. Are you a Guit Michelin cook or a microwave cook? A photographer who wants to have the best possible quality or someone who just wants to take some snapshots? If your answer is a photographer, I want to be a real photographer, then edit your images. It doesn't take long, it's getting easier every year and it can be really fun too. And it's so easy. There are courses on my website where I guide you step by step through the whole image editing process with my own images and you get the images as well to do it step by step with me. And with presets, you can also speed things up. And that's why I gift you three Lightroom presets for free in this video. Link is in the description box below, also the link to my website. Are there any other bad photography advices you got in the past? Post them in the comments below and maybe we'll do another video about this topic. And if this video gets 1,500 thumbs up, I'll tell you three landscape photography mistakes 99% of photographers do. And I did myself as well. So hit thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, do it now and we'll see us next time. Oh, and also check out my Instagram and TikTok for behind the scenes and photos. So thank you for watching and bye bye.